Hi guys, it is a warm, balmy Wednesday morning here in the end times in South Austin, Texas. It is Wednesday, November 25th, 2015. As, as Austin, Texas gears up for what could be its third, its third biblical flood of 2015, which is the rainiest year in Austin, Texas's history after four years of not draining, not raining. Can't think of a better day for me to bring you my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media, in this case Yahoo News, to bring you more evidence that this planet is heading directly into a burning lake of fire on the eve of those bullshit UN climate talks. And, and guys, are you aware of the the name of these climate talks, these horseshit climate talks cranking up next week? It is COP21. COP21. I, I, I you know, it, it, it makes you wonder, the UN, what names did they reject? before coming up with the absolute glorious on-target acronym to explain their efforts to uh, to uh, save the planet from <clears throat> climate change. COP21. I absolutely love it. But anyway, so as you may or may not know, one of the many ways to save the planet that the UN is promoting at COP21 is ramping up the production of biofuels. Biofuels. There, 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 there's another one. You know, biofuel. Am I the only person on this planet uh, with the sick, twisted sense of humor to appreciate some uh, organization of planet eaters calling themselves COP21 promoting the use of biofuels to save a planet. So anyway, this is how we're going to save the planet for uh, from fossil fuels is by going to biofuels. And so this is one example of how this is playing out on the ground. This is how Indonesia is going to save the planet from burning of fossil fuels. Indonesia's biodiesel push is vital, is vital for emission cuts target. <clears throat> Indonesia's biodiesel consumption is seen soaring to almost 8 million kiloliters, not sure what that transfer, what a kiloliter is, uh, to 8 million kiloliters next year from about 1.1 uh, million kiloliters this year. An industry body said, adding that increased demand by these Indonesian consumers, you know, rapidly getting out of poverty, which is another UN goal, was crucial for the country to meet its commitments on cutting greenhouse gas emissions. <clears throat> Indonesia, the world's top palm oil producer, is pushing greater biodiesel usage to reduce its oil import bill and to create more demand for palm oil. Jumping down to the uh, bottom of the story, any increase in biodiesel use, whether in India or anywhere else on the planet, would also be positive for palm oil prices, which hit six-year lows earlier this year. Yes, yes, yes. So if you want to get rich in the end times, I suggest you invest in palm oil as, as the UN 
cheering on, ramping up palm oil to save the planet. In COP 21, let's see, and I'm just going to go romping around the planet. I guess this is, uh, if the article will come up, uh, is, is pretty much anywhere on the planet. If you're a developing nation, <clears throat> developing nation climate adaptation cost to hit 790 billion dollars per year. 790 billion dollars each and every year. Oh yeah, that, that, this is going to happen. Developing countries could face a bill of $790 billion per year by 2050 for adapting to climate change. Anti-poverty agency Oxfam said Wednesday. I got to do a full rant on Oxfam bringing down a planet at some point. Carbon, and so that's about all it says. Then, it's, then it goes directly from that carbon curbing pledges which form the cornerstone of a climate rescue pact to be sealed at COP21 in Paris next week are insufficient. Yes, uh, and unless much more is done, developing nations will end up spending about 50% more on climate adaptation by mid-century than they would under I any uh, program that actually managed to limit uh, global warming to two degrees Celsius. That uh, absolute joke. Uh, anybody who thinks a bunch of planet-eating cops at the UN are going to limit uh, global warming to two degrees Celsius on this planet. Got one thing to tell you. And I guess uh, in line with that story, what is the World Bank up to in Africa this week? World Bank sets 16 billion dollar plan for climate fight in Africa. The World Bank announced Tuesday a plan to help Africa weather climate shocks that require 16 billion dollars in financing over the next five years. Uh, so it goes on, so I read this whole thing Sub-Saharan Africa is highly vulnerable to climate shocks. Blah, blah, blah. You read this whole story, the word overpopulation never mentioned, never mentioned in this story. There's a fellow in the comment section, leave a comment, fellow calling himself Hambone Littletail. 16 billion bucks would buy a lot of condoms and pay for a lot of vasectomies. Okay, uh, as long as we're over there in sub-Saharan Africa, what is going on in Ethiopia, which I thought was suffering from this big drought? We now see El Nino floods could displace 100,000 in Ethiopia. Floods caused by El Nino could displace more than 100,000 people in Ethiopia, where more than 8 million people are now facing a food crisis because of the worst drought since a devastating 1984 famine, the United Nations said on Monday. Uh, anyway, there's no way to win. 
uh, if, if you're not dying of thirst, I guess you're, you're getting washed down the river. Uh, again, the word overpopulation not showing up anywhere. Okay, speaking of the word overpopulation not showing up anywhere in the story, of course, one, one of, I, I won't call it one of the main drivers, uh, one of the main targets of COP21, but, but one of them on there is this absolute uh, environmentalist wet dream that we're going to completely eliminate fossil fuels off of this planet this century. So what is India? India, uh, it is the second, right now, the second biggest population on the planet, soon to be the number one most populated country on the planet, right now the third biggest. What does India, the third biggest uh, carbon emitter, what does India have to say about anyone's suggestion to phase out fossil fuels this century? India opposes any deal to phase out fossil fuels by 2100 at COP21. <clears throat> India would reject any deal to combat climate change that includes a pledge for the world to wean itself off of fossil fuels this century. Underlying the difficulties countries face in agreeing how to slow global warming. Yes, uh, to keep warming in check, some countries want COP21 to include a commitment to decarbonize, to reduce and ultimately phase out the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas that is blamed for climate change this century. India, the world's third largest carbon emitter, is dependent on coal for most of its energy needs. And despite a pledge to expand solar and wind power, has said its economy is too small and its people too poor to end use of fossil fuels anytime soon. And anyone who thinks that is limited to, uh, to India where was this uh, other story? Good God, I got too much to talk about. What is going on in Belgium? I, this one did take me by surprise, guys. I, I don't know. I, I just had some crazy idea. Uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry, not, not Belgium, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I had some crazy idea that Holland of any country what was stepping up to the plate? I guess uh, I, I, I guess I was wrong in my tiny glimmer of optimism. Once again, uh, you, you make some optimistic assumption, and, and then you learn the truth about about this. this. This is coming out of the Netherlands. Missing climate goals. Dutch mall closing coal plants. With the Netherlands on track to miss its climate goals for 2020, the Dutch government is coming under pressure to order the closure of the nation's coal plants. A group of 64 climate scientists on Monday called for the shuttering of Holland's 11 coal-fired power plants, including three coal-fired power plants that came online this year. 
at a cost of almost six billion dollars. Dutch coal use is at a record high in 2015 and supplies up to a third of the country's electri electricity's needs. Uh, two thirds of Holland's 17 million people live below sea level and would be vulnerable to rising sea levels in a warming world. And so there you go. Uh, guys, so w w with those two stories from India, everywhere from India and the Netherlands ramping up their coal use, record amount uh, of fossil fuels being burned everywhere from India to the Netherlands. Gee, no surprise you're going to see this short, sweet story. Well, not talking so much about coal. Uh, this is oil. Big oil. Oil firms have gap. Big gap between their plans and their climate pledges. Big oil climate pledges. Alright. Dig a little deeper into big oil's climate pledges. <clears throat> Just pretty much read this whole story. The fossil fuel industry is still laying plans for long-term and long-term investments and growth that are at odds with many companies commitments to cut greenhouse gases to slow climate change according to a study released on Tuesday the report said there was, quote, a yawning gap, a yawning gap between what the industry is currently doing and what it would need to do to be compatible with a limit to a warming of two degrees Celsius. Yes, uh, you think so. This is just one more evidence about how these fossil fuel companies completely, completely laughing off any notion that this planet uh, has any intention of cutting its use of fossil fuels this century. Pull your head out of your ass. I anybody who, who thinks that this planet's commitment uh, to averting a, a, a guaranteed plummet into a burning lake of fire is going to be stronger than their desire to keep sucking the sugar tit of the fossil fuel industry. Got one thing to tell you. It, 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 it is clear where this planet's uh, goals are. Oh, Jesus, I'm just kind of hopping all around. Uh, what do I have? I think I talked about that. Let's see. Oh, here we go. But don't worry, don't worry, you techno-utopians. Uh, not concerned about Big Oil's plans. We have this one. Better batteries to beat global warming. One of the key technologies that could help wean the globe, wean the globe off fossil fuels is probably at your fingertips or in your pocket right now the battery. And uh, I really am going to replace the batteries in my, for, for one of the last jobs that the batteries in my bullshit detector button, I think a great send off to the batteries at my fingertips of the bullshit detector button is to detect the bullshit in the headline 
from Yahoo Tech better batteries to beat global warming. All right, but anyway, guys, you know what? Uh, let's just one more here. I got a bunch of them. We're going to finish up since we are on the eve of the third biblical flood to hit uh, Austin, Texas this year. I can't think of, I probably should have uh, started with this story, but it's a good a place, a good as segue to uh, get out of this rant. Weather disasters have doubled, have doubled in recent decades. UN reports. The UN on Monday detailed a doubling in weather-related disasters over the last three decades, a week before nearly 140 world leaders gather in terror-struck Paris to thrash out, thrash out a crucial climate pact called COP21. More than 600,000 lives have been lost since 1995 to flooding, landslides, and other weather-induced catastrophes, the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction said, with the number of such events doubling between 1985 to 1994 and the decade 2004 to 2014. And of course it doesn't mention that 600,000 lives have been lost while every two and a half days 600,000 people born on the planet. The new report quote underlines why it is so important that a new climate change agreement emerge from COP21, the global talks that open next Monday. But, uh, of course, while the global COPs meet in terror-struck Paris to save the planet, I will be hawking Christmas trees, but first I have to survive the weekend uh, as we're looking at up to six inches of rain. Six inches of rain here in Austin, Texas on Friday. Uh, the grand opening of the Optimist Club Christmas tree lot. You know, you absolutely have to love this. The grand opening of an Optimist Club Christmas tree lot the day after Thanksgiving six inches of rain headed to the Christmas tree lot but I gotta get back to the Christmas tree lot actually I have to get to the International House of Pancakes for the meeting of the Optimist Club to figure out exactly how we're going to have a grand opening of the Optimist Club Christmas tree lot with six inches of rain bearing down on Austin, Texas. So I better wrap up this week's edition, the Thanksgiving 2015 edition of my COP21 climate change meltdown roundup rant and say, Happy Thanksgiving, guys.